Now, here's the next thing. As you probably read down your page and you picked up the syllabus and looked at what's required in the syllabus, you saw that midterm project. That means you have to make a presentation. To do your presentation, you need to make a choice as to what topic you're going to choose. That's a chance to put down your topic is in the chapter eight section of your web access page. Look down there, make your choice, just click on it and make your choice. Do that soon because if other people choose things that you're really interested in, you'll be left with something that is not necessarily your cup of tea. I find that when people are working on something they care about, they tend to do a much better job. Okay. So those are a couple of housekeeping tips. Now, let's get back to chapter one. Chapter one, how sociologists view a problem and what they use as an example is the abortion dilemma. I know that's rather heavy right out the bat, you know, right as the first uh, topic, but that's what we have. The abortion dilemma, very tough going. And when I say that, I mean in terms of difficult decisions for anybody to make, female or male, but more for the female because it's the female's body and the decision will be with them forever, right? So take a look at that. By the time you finish with chapter one, I want you to know something about abortion, but more, I want you to know about how you look at a sociological problem. Now, one of the things you're gonna know, you're gonna learn about, is going to say that social problems, is the topic that you're dealing with, deals with sociological problems, excuse me, deals with problems and behaviors of a group rather than an individual. Now, there's going to be some tendency on your part to talk about what it means to the individual. And I understand that. That just means you're a sensitive person and you care about people. I, I don't want to push that aside. I'm just saying though that for the course, sociology, we look at groups of people and how groups of people behave, make their decisions, things like that. Okay, here's some of the things you're gonna learn. Understanding the sociological imagination. And I'm gonna put that another way, sociological perspective, perspective. All right. In your book, get that phrase, look it up, search on it if you have to, and make sure you understand what that is. Not only because it's good for this topic and for this course, but as you take other sociology courses throughout uh, your college career, you're going to be glad you know that. So you want to know sociological perspective. Next thing, how sociologists use location location, right? So where a person is when they are doing whatever it is they're doing makes a big difference as to how that thing comes out, the decisions that they make, how they behave. I know that seems obvious to you, but still it is a very key point. Let's just say you are a female and you need an abortion. If you're making that point, if you're making that decision and you're at home with your parents, surrounded by people who care about you and want the best for you, you're more likely to make that decision a different way than if you're, say, I don't know, out of the house, you're a grown adult, you're living on your own or with some other adults, and they have their own cultural values, social values, religious values, and their way of thinking about those things. You're likely to make that decision differently. So this becomes a very key thing. You want to describe how sociologists can make contributions to studying their social problems. Now this sounds like it's a good thing, but not always, not always. When you are trying to study society and measure it, sociologists do that, measure society, measure their behaviors, what they're likely to do, things like that. When you're trying to do that, you don't want to be part of that element because if you are, you've actually changed the outcome, and that now means that the outcome of that study is now tainted. It's, now tainted. it's not the same as it would have been without you. So how do we know it's accurate? How do we know you did not make huge influence on that outcome? That too might seem obvious to some of you who are really into research and know about those things, but for those of you who are not, you want to be careful to be objective, that is not to influence the outcome of those kinds of things, all right? So you might seem to you that sociologists, you know, a lot of this is just common sense, but is it? 
In order for sociology to be common sense, that means that the decisions and the uh, conclusions that people would make would actually have to be common, which is to say most people, went way more than most people, the vast majority of people would make the same logical conclusions. Um, but that's not hardly ever the case, really. Hardly ever. So common sense is not that common. It only seems common because the people around you might have made the same decision or come to the same conclusion, but you have a really tiny slice of the universe. The universe is gigantic. And all you have to do is step out of your neighborhood, your city, your area, and you'll run into a lot of people for whom any decision that you would have made would not seem com common, would not seem obvious. Okay. Actually, we cover some of that topic during this uh, during this uh, whole book, this whole semester that we're doing. But I want to point that out because that becomes key. Here's one of the principles of sociology that you will learn very quickly. It goes like this. Watched behavior is changed behavior. If people know that you are watching, they tend to behave differently. Most often for the better, thank goodness, <laughs> but still differently. And if you're trying to study it, how do you know that you have gotten the objective, real truth about whatever topic it is that you are studying? All right, so these are just some of the things that you need to know when you finish chapter one. The rest of them are listed. They're listed on that part about um, the objectives of the chapter, but I want to make sure you get those two things down very clearly. Spend some time about it. Make sure that you are certain as to what they're asking you about, what the definitions are. If you have questions, of course, email me as you have been doing. <laughs> email me. I'll be glad to answer them for you. And just a little hint, yes, these things will end up on the final. Welcome to our course. I think you're going to enjoy it. We have an opportunity to study some very exciting, interesting, current topics that are going on right now today and that mean a lot for our current present society. And you get to take this knowledge and go on through college and learn so many other things before you finish your degree. Looking forward to doing these things with you. Thanks.